Welcome to NTN Nightly. I am Janelle Novel. This edition Stop Stories. St. Lucia records 20 new cases of COVID-19 as the CMO calls for an end to the stigmatization of patients. The Department of Economic Development builds internal capacity to implement the 2020-2023 strategic plan. And St. Lucia discusses better health for men and boys on this International Men's Day. Thursday, November 19, 2020, the Ministry of Health received confirmation of 20 new cases of COVID-19. This brings the total number of cases diagnosed in country to date to 203. Ten of the cases are non-nationals. Two of these cases are visitors to St. Lucia. Case number 186 is a 28-year-old female visitor and case number 190 is a 29-year-old male visitor. Both of these individuals arrived in St. Lucia on Monday, November 16, 2020. On arrival, they went through the established screening processes and based on the fact that they did not have the approved test, they were required to undergo COVID-19 testing in country. They proceeded to a COVID-19 approved accommodation where they were placed in quarantine pending their results. The individuals are now being placed in isolation. The Ministry of Health has commenced contact tracing as per protocol. On Sunday, November 15, 2020, a cargo ship arrived into St. Lucia carrying 11 crew members. After reports of respiratory illness among some of the crew members, they were all assessed and tested for COVID-19 and were placed in quarantine on the vessel. The Ministry of Health received confirmation that eight of the crew members have tested positive for COVID-19. These are cases number 185, number 187, number 188, number 189, number 192, number 195, number 197, and number 202. These individuals are currently in isolation and receiving care. Out of the 20 cases of COVID-19 reported, 10 of them are St. Lucia nationals. After being assessed and tested for COVID-19, they were placed in quarantine while awaiting their results. Five of these cases were identified through the contact tracing process and an epidemiological link has been established for these five cases. Investigations are ongoing to determine the existence of any additional epidemiological links associated with these cases. As per protocol, arrangements have been made to place these individuals into care. Case number 184 is an 18-year-old female from the Castries district. Case number 191 is a 32-year-old female from the Castries district. Case number 193 is a 48-year-old male from the Castries district. Case number 194 is a 47-year-old male from the Groselet district. Case number 196 is a 20-year-old male from the Castries district. Case number 198 is a 50-year-old female from the Miku district. Case number 199 is a 34-year-old female from the Groselet district. Case number 200 is a 47-year-old female from the Groselet district. Case number 201 is an 18-year-old female from the Castries district. Case number 203 is a 27-year-old female from the Babano district. All of these individuals, after being assessed and tested for COVID-19, were placed in quarantine by healthcare practitioners. Meantime, Chief Medical Officer Dr. Sharon Belmar-George has called for an end to discrimination and stigmatization of persons diagnosed with the virus. Over the past three weeks, a number of individuals in care have recovered and been discharged from care. It is important that families, communities, workplaces and the wider society help in creating a supportive environment which will reduce the fear or concerns of individuals who are returning to their daily routines after recovery. An individual who has been diagnosed with COVID-19 needs the comfort of familiar faces and places to help in their reintegration as this helps with their emotional and mental well-being. As such, the Ministry of Health and Wellness makes an appeal to everyone to be compassionate and avoid stigma towards individuals who have been diagnosed with COVID-19. Let us continue to practice 
the infection prevention and control guidelines that will help to reduce the exposure to the virus. Wash and sanitize your hands often during the day. Ensure a mask is always used when in public and ensure it covers both your mouth and your nose. Sanitize frequently touched surfaces, often using a bleach solution, and maintain the separation of six feet from others, which is about two arms length. If experiencing flu-like symptoms, keep away from others and seek medical care immediately at the closest respiratory clinic. Also avoid contact with others who may have flu-like symptoms. The high incidences of non-communicable diseases in the Caribbean has raised concern about the vulnerability of the population to COVID-19. More than 90% of COVID-19 deaths in the region were that of nationals with underlying non-communicable diseases. Hamadi Mark picks up the story. CARICOM's lead head of government for health and Prime Minister for St. Kitts and Nevis, Honorable Dr. Timothy Harris, is calling on small island developing states, SIDS, to combat non communicable diseases, NCDs, as a means of fighting COVID 19 and lowering fatalities associated with the pandemic. Addressing the 2020 World Health Summit, Honorable Dr. Harris explains that over 90% of COVID 19 deaths were people with NCDs. He says in the absence of a vaccine, prevention and control of the people living with NCDs, such as obesity, hypertension, diabetes and heart disease can lessen the impact of the coronavirus on small island developing states. Honorable Dr. Timothy Harris says one way of achieving this is through the Defeat NCDs Partnership. The Defeat NCD Partnership is a practical approach to achieve Sustainable Development Goal 3.4 which demands that by 2030, there be a reduction by one third in terms of premature deaths due to NCDs through prevention and treatment and the promotion of mental health and well-being. Honorable Dr. Harris urged global leaders in health and national governments to recognize the COVID-19 pandemic as a signal to strengthen health systems and to reduce non-communicable diseases. When that happens, we can then aspire to a healthier global population and reduce risk from future pandemics. By supporting the Defeat NCD Partnership, we can build back better from the COVID-19 crisis. The Defeat NCDs Partnership was launched in September of 2018. It helps countries with low resources tackle premature deaths, sickness and disabilities from non-communicable diseases and also aims to reduce the social and economic impact of NCDs. From the Government Information Service, Hermity Mark reporting. In other COVID-related news, on the 11th of November 2020, the UK and Chile hosted a virtual seminar on COVID-19 vaccines access, finance and distribution as part of efforts to strengthen international and regional cooperation, ensuring fair and equitable access to COVID-19 vaccines. St. Lucia's Ministry of Health officials and representatives from more than 30 countries in Latin America and the Caribbean were joined by leaders and experts from the Coalition for Epidemic Preparedness Innovations, Global Alliance for Vaccines and Immunization, the World Health Organization, the Pan American Health Organization, the Inter American Development Bank, the Caribbean Development Bank, and the Caribbean Public Health Agency. The event discussed the COVAX facility, the global initiative working with governments and manufacturers to ensure COVID-19 vaccines are available worldwide to economies of all financial means. The vast majority of governments across the Caribbean have now signed up to COVAX, which will allow for rapid access to safe and effective vaccines once they receive regulatory approval. The UK has so far committed up to £829 million of new UK aid funding for the development and distribution of COVID-19 vaccines, treatments and tests to ensure new tools are available to all, including the world's poorest countries, and £5 million for other critical COVID-19 research and development. The UK Foreign Secretary recently co-hosted an event at the UN General Assembly in support of these objectives, with the UK committing up to £500 million to the COVAX Advanced Markets Commitment.
The Caribbean is the hardest region hit by COVID-19 economically. Secretary General of CARICOM, Irina Rock, spoke to the issue during the 10th High-Level Forum on the Republic of Korea-Caribbean Partnership. More from Michelle Nurse of CARICOM News Time. While CARICOM has been relatively successful in managing the health aspects of COVID-19, the pandemic has had a devastating impact on the mostly tourism-dependent countries, which are also affected by climate change and the challenges of sourcing financing. In his keynote address to the 10th High-Level Forum on Korea-Caribbean Partnership held on the 11th of November, Ambassador Irvin LaRock, CARICOM Secretary General, provided insight on how the pandemic is affecting the region and what it will take to recover. Indeed, the pandemic has had a devastating effect on the overall economy in CARICOM states. CARICOM has been acknowledged as being the worst hit region economically amongst all developing countries. Revenue losses associated with the virus average between 30 to 40 percent. Overall, most countries are projected to experience double digit contractions in economic activity in 2020. The International Monetary Fund has forecast an average decline of 13 percent for the region but some CARICOM countries will experience a decline as high as 20%. This projection could worsen in light of the reinstatement of lockdown measures in tourism source countries in Europe. CARICOM's recovery will be undertaken from a position on which the IMF has concluded that the sudden stop in tourist arrivals and the local lockdowns was equivalent to a cardiac arrest. The Secretary General pointed out to the delegates who joined the forum virtually from across different time zones. Our community has several proposals to mitigate the risks in response to the crisis, as well as provide support to safeguard lives and maintain livelihoods. These include, one, refinancing COVID-related debt into long-term low-interest bonds, thereby postponing the debt servicing payments into the foreseeable future. Two, comprehensive debt relief for small, vulnerable, middle-income states like CARICOM. And three, designing a variety of resilience financial instruments aimed at mobilizing and providing appropriately priced funding to build economic and climate resilience. CARICOM looks forward to the support of countries such as South Korea to advocate for these issues on its behalf, particularly in forests such as the G20, and the OECD Development Assistance Committee, where decisions with a global impact are taken and our member states do not have a voice. He said the economic recovery of member states will no doubt depend to quite an extent on external factors. But building back better, using the already established CARICOM single market and economy presents the best platform for achieving economic and climate resilience as well as sustainable growth and development, he said. This is NTN Nightly. Please stay with us. COVID-19 is a new pandemic disease as declared by the World Health Organization. It is transmitted directly by respiratory droplets when an affected person coughs or sneezes or indirectly through rubbing the face with contaminated hands. There is still no specific treatment or vaccine against COVID-19 and as such, the farming community should adhere to some special recommendations. Limit the number of crew members to only essential persons. Practice frequent hand washing and cleaning of all boat surfaces. Limit contact with the public keeping a safe distance between each person. Limit unnecessary conversation with customers and pairs during the sale of fish. Wash hands frequently with soap and running water or use 60 to 95% alcohol-based hand sanitizer until water and soap are available. Sneeze and cough in a flexed elbow or into a tissue, immediately discarding the used tissue into a bin and wash hands with soap and water or use an alcohol-based hand sanitizer until soap and water is available. 
and avoid close contact with persons having respiratory symptoms. More than ever before, your important role as gatekeepers of St. Lucia's nutritional health and food security should be taken seriously. When you exercise these precautions, you not only safeguard your health, but also continue to allow all St. Lucians access to freshly caught fish and other seafood. Remember, it is our responsibility to ensure our nation eats fresh, St. Lucia's best. Welcome back. To ensure successful delivery of the medium-term development strategy and other products of the Department of Economic Development, a strategic plan for 2020-2023 has been launched to build internal capacity of that department. Jesse Leos has that report. Institutional arrangements have critical importance for planning and implementation of adaptation and mitigation actions. With this in mind, the Division of Economic Development has launched a strategic plan for the period 2020 to 2023 that will establish a clear strategic direction and optimize its operational efficiency, relationship with stakeholders, and capacity to deliver on its mandate. A ceremony was recently held to mark the occasion. Claudius Emanuel is the Permanent Secretary in the Ministry of Economic Development, Housing, Urban Renewal, Transport and Civil Aviation. Today's launch of this strategic plan, therefore, is a decisive effort at reasserting the crucial role that the division must play in contributing to St. Lucia's socio-economic development. As a resource-poor small island developing state, there are many structural features which we cannot directly change. However, the effective and efficient utilization of the limited available resources is something that is directly within our locus of control. As such, we are obliged to do all that is possible to strengthen our, institu our institutional frameworks. Priority initiatives of the division's four-year strategic plan include national discussions on local, regional, and international socioeconomic trends, human resource and capacity development, prioritizing resources based on annual work programs aligned to government's priorities, and monitoring, evaluation, and delivery on flagship products of the reformed public sector investment plan, that is the PSIP, and medium-term development strategy, MTDS. Having launched the 2020-2023 medium-term development strategy, this strategic plan will invariably buttress and complement the implementation of this landmark development policy instrument for St. Lucia. Working in tandem, these two critical policy instruments will serve as the guiding document of the division as well as St. Lucia and the many development partners and stakeholders. At the minimum, it will dispel the uncertainty regarding what the division does and the value proposition it offers. That was Tommy Descartes, Chief Economist in the Division of Economic Development. Minister for Economic Development, Housing, Urban Renewal, Transport and Civil Aviation, Honorable Guy Joseph, commends personnel within the division for their contribution toward the indigenous drafting of the strategic plan. He looks forward to its successful implementation. I don't want what we have planned to become another set of documents on the shelf or on a hard drive. As a country, we ought to know what we need. How do we plan for it? And how do we achieve it? That is the key. Because we can have the best plan on paper. If we cannot achieve it, it is as good as the paper that it is written on. In congratulating the division staff on the launch of their strategic plan and commending them for their efforts to date in rolling out the medium-term development strategy, Prime Minister Honorable Alan Shasney indicated that the MTDS projects have helped tremendously in generating revenues and stabilizing the economy. We got our October numbers and I think it was $89 million in tax revenue for the month of October um, and the goal was 103. So we have come a long ways. I mean, we were at 
1.50 million. I think one month we did $44 million in tax revenue. So we're seeing that we can, the combination of the construction, the IT, ICT sector, as well as what we're seeing in tourism, that is working. And a large part, I want to say thank you to all of you. The launch of the Division of Economic Development Strategic Plan for 2020 to 2023 was held on November 5th at the Finance Administrative Center in Point Serafin. For the Government Information Service, I am Jesse Leons reporting. Prime Minister the Honorable Alan Chastney and Minister for Gender Relations Honorable Dr. Gail Rigabert joined in celebrating the contribution of men to the development of St. Lucia on the occasion of International Men's Day. International Men's Day is celebrated annually on the 19th of November. This year's observance is being held under the theme Better Health for Men and Boys. This theme focuses on the improvement and enhancement of the health and well-being of the male population across the world. On Wednesday, the International Men's Network, in collaboration with the Department of Gender Relations, held a Boys to Men conference in an effort to celebrate the men of St. Lucia, their contributions, and to urge those who are better off to reach back and help those who may fall behind. President of the International Men's Network, Barry Innocent, expressed his expectations of the conference. I pray that this, this event um, serves its purpose, where uh, a means of communication in this light, both music and articulations, would reach and impact the minds of young men that could cause things like behavior modification or commence some level of behavioral modification. Minister for Education, Innovation, Gender Relations and Sustainable Development, Honorable Dr. Gail Rigabert, indicated that what it means to be a man continues to change. The minister noted that men are not invincible and do battle with their own challenges, making their need to be heard even more important. We owe it to ourselves, all of us, to listen more to one another. But hearing is not enough. We must be brave enough to challenge our long-held beliefs. And we must give ourselves permission to adjust our beliefs and expectations of ourselves and one another in keeping with the new learning that we have received from our experiences. In this immediate case, the lessons we have learned from COVID-19. It is okay for a man to share domestic responsibilities as we work from home. It is okay for a woman to be the only or the higher income earner in a household. Men can hurt too. They do feel and they do hurt. Men do not always have all the answers. Prime Minister the Honorable Alan Chastney encouraged men to be their brother's keeper. And I feel that there are many young men who have been incredibly successful in this country. And what we're asking for them to do is to appreciate that they need to be role models for some of those young men who may not have been given the support that they had. It is true that for any gender, the key to success is support. It's inescapable. And when we have anyone who is struggling to find their place in our society, it's left to the majority of people who have been successful to never to take for granted what they have been able to achieve, but to turn back and reach to help those to come up. Feature speaker Dr. Joshua Les Flores shared some words of advice. One of the things that I never, never wanted to throw away was the gifts that God gave me. And each and every one of us has gifts. Each and every one of us has talents. You may not always have the best set of cards in your hand, but play them because God is with you. God will not give you anything that you cannot handle. And even in the times that I thought I could not handle exam after exam after exam, I stand before you here today, accomplished, happy, tired, but grateful for the opportunities that I have been given. And 
the habits that I learned early on that helped me to push forward regardless of what came my way. So I ask, choose the right path for yourself, even if it's the hardest choice. But don't worry because it will continue to get easier. Choose to be diligent, diligent in school, at work, in your community. Choose to make the most of every opportunity. Choose to stay above and away from influences, but rather influencing positively. The first International Men's Day was celebrated in 1992. The occasion was instituted to celebrate the achievement by boys and men to society, nation and community. The Boys Training Center has received a timely donation from CIBC First Caribbean International Bank. We get the details in this report. CIBC First Caribbean International Bank is exercising their corporate social responsibility through a donation to the Boys Training Center. The financial institution is donating 30 lifetime chairs and a kitchen stove to assist with the facility's daily operations. CIBC's country head for St. Lucia and director for corporate business development in the OECS, Victor Boyce, says through this donation they are demonstrating their appreciation for the work of the Boys Training Center, providing a family environment, care and safety for the wards. Your work is bridging critical gaps in the fundamental needs of your wards. In addition to the rehabilitation aspect of the work of the BTC, the institution brings forcefully to mind the saying that it takes a village to raise a child. For we know that in every village, there are those who have more and there are those who have less. Some homes can offer an environment that is more enabling of balanced growth and development than others can. It therefore befalls institutions and civil society at large to help narrow the gap of need and to link hands to provide that safety net before or you fall through the cracks into deviance and destitution. Kashama Shigoshi, guidance counselor at the Boys Training Center, expressed her gratitude for the generous gift and says it is a learning opportunity for the wards at the center. Your donation is quite timely as it solidifies some of the work we have been doing in the life skills program where social responsibility is concerned. Last week we had a debate on social responsibility, but even before that we did corporate social responsibility. So today the boys are seeing firsthand and experiencing what it is for the corporate world to say, yes, I want to volunteer, yes, I want to donate. So it's not just talk for them, but they are seeing it come to play. Shigoshi says one more need of the facility is met. This donation allows their meeting areas to be fully stocked and the wards will no longer have to carry chairs from one classroom to another. She hopes for further collaboration with the financial institution on other projects targeted towards the rehabilitation of the young men of St. Pusha. From the Government Information Service, Huma Dimok reporting. That brings us to the end of NTN Nightly. Join us next time at 7 p.m. with a repeat at 7 a.m. You can also catch up with us anytime on the St. Lucia Government Facebook page or YouTube channel. I am Janelle Norville.